Okay, so this is going to be part one of a multi tutorial series for Blender in design. Specifically, since most people have been asking many of the same questions, I'm breaking up this up into parts. Um, it's going to start off basic, and I'm not the most knowledgeable person in Blender, but I can give you guys some tips which will help you get you on your way. So let's begin. Uh, the first and most common one I see that uh, needs to be addressed right away is uh, how do I get a texture on something specifically in the game engine? Because most people are just available for render, so how you do it. First you want to get right here where it says Blender Render, switch to Blender Game. And then you're going to get new options, some of the things you're going to move around. Some things you'll need to go back and forth and be able to edit, uh, but for most of it that's not what we're going to be getting into. Uh, so then you're going to click under Shading, GLSL, um, Open GL Shading Language. Um, Blender, it's based off of C programming language and it's a higher up programming language which is why Blender Engine is not as strong because uh, higher up it has to run through more uh, architects and stuff so it can be a little bit slow and strenuous on the computer. Anyway, now that we have our um, OpenGL activated we can go to Textured and now this is fully able to run textures in the game engine and you add a plane. Next we're going to be going over how to add a texture onto something. Um, is pretty straightforward. Here is your cube, which will be texturing and I'll texture something a little bit more complex. The next tutorial, number two, will focus specifically on making uh, proper textures. This is just for a quick test. So first you want to get texture on your cube, right? So we're going to go here and we're also going to open up the UV editor. Uh, UV editor is just going to tell Blender the coordinates of where we're going to be putting our pictures on faces. because That's all texturing is, putting pictures on faces. And you want to do so in an intelligent manner. So this is a cube, you can just go to unwrap. Uh, if it was anything else, it would be a little bit more complex. Um, this is going to have all the faces on top of each other. So if we took this one, I'm using a different face select mode now. This is also a useful tip for designing. Uh, you can grab this, and then I can get this one separate. But as you can see, all the others remain the same. And I unwrap it, and it stays. Uh, it doesn't always stay, though. So we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to do what we did. It's also a smart UV project, which will do a little bit more of an intelligent design. Oh, let's do the select all of them. Use A to select. And, oh yes, you press the U to open up the unwrapping menu. So, smart UV project. A little bit more laid out. We can get some difference in there. So uh, when you open up an image, you are actually opening up a reference. This image doesn't actually apply to it. So we're going to find an image, a simple texture that we can use. Uh, CG texture is probably the best since it's all free and you can use it for commercial use. Um, I would highly recommend signing up for it just to promote this because it's a really helpful resource. So something simple, make concrete. Uh, I can go through this for hours picking one, but we're not. We're just going to do something simple. So some dirty, dirty concrete. Uh, we'll just do this one. Uh, if you can get away with it, depending on the size of your texture, always go as small as possible. You can possibly get away with because conserving that data is like one of the most important things for make actually making a game. So, so we have this now. I'm just gonna put it in the assign folder. It's I warn you now. You are going to want to set up organized files for starting a project because you will pay for it later when you have all your textures in a different spot. Because the game Blender will reference your file paths, and if you move stuff around, then it, you're going to have to refine the links, and it's very frustrating. So we have our texture now that we want to use. Now I just have to find it. It, wasn't it? Also, you guys can click this button. I'll show you the textures in a thumbnail so it's easier to find. Now we have our reference material. As you can guess, each face is going to show up accordingly to how it is. Um, you can use a lot of the same hotkeys in the UV editor as you can in the usual editing window. So A, select all, rotate, sizing, um, grabbing individual points. If you want to, whatever you're doing to affect something in the 
the engine, then you click this button. So if I select here, it's going to tell me which face it is. Uh, yada yada. Select around to figure out which faces you're going to be editing. But this is our start. So now we have where everything's going to be referenced pretty much. We can press tab, get out of edit mode. And oh yes, you can only unwrap in edit mode. So now we're back in object mode, which is like identified objects as a whole. We're going to go to materials. Oh, that's the cube itself. This is the material window. And this is where all the information is going to be saved as a texture by itself. So we're going to name it material one. How creative. Next, we're going to go to the texture panel and click right here. If you ever lose this window, just scroll up because this just gets minimized. I don't know how it happens, but if you can't find anything here, just scroll up, you'll find it. So um we're gonna go and hit new. And we're gonna go to type and it's gonna be image or movie. And then we're going to go to image open. Find our image right here. Oh, that's not good. It's all stretchy. But it said right here. That's because we have to go to coordinates under mapping and go to UV. So now everything is exactly as should be. Each face, I can rotate as I want, is directly proportional. Um, I would, you should always set up your mesh the way you want it and have it all completely fine tuned and everything before you unwrap and before you design or grab a texture because, uh, Editing a texture is way more easier and less dysfunctional than changing the mesh itself. So now we have color, and sometimes you can't see it right now, but you're going to get like a light right here. And sometimes it's going to be really shiny and weird like this, that's glossy. To fix that, we need to have the specular influence just be the color. There's uh, different kinds of maps in design textures, so I'm going to go into them briefly. This is what we call color map or diffuse. It's just like the picture itself. It, uh, it's just what's going to be pasted on. A specular map will affect how light hits it, like this. So when we went here, look. So when we went here and we went to specular and we hit color, the map, which is our normal picture map, whatever it looks like, is going to affect the color now. So uh, that's just one thing. And then the next thing is going to be the other type of map called normal mapping. So that's going to be under geometry. We actually have to make one. So you're going to have to download it. Uh, you can get it for GIMP. You can search uh, GIMP normal map plugin and then you have to install it. It's a little bit tricky, but there's instructions. So we're going to get the texture we had before. Drag it in here. Filters, map, normal map. And they're always going to be blue. Uh, a standard normal map. And you can increase the scale. Or the minimum, whatever you want. We're gonna go OK. Now that's no map, but it does is it fakes bumps. It's gonna be coded and into the engine, and it's gonna affect the way light hits it. So once you've done that, save, rename it so you can differentiate. You can get away with low quality sliding since it's a normal map and not the actual color map. Crunching those numbers is very important with uh, conservative game design, especially in Blender. So now we're going to go to the next texture panel, so this is adding a new type of texture, but still keeping this one on at the same time. We're going to go to New, Image or Movie, Open, find the one you were at before, your new normal map. Whoa, that's not good. Well, actually that's normal, so don't worry about it. And then under Mapping, we're going to go to UV as well. Oh yes, open up image sampling and click on normal map. And then your influence is not going to be color, because we already have our color map, and we're going to be going to normal. And now you can scale, as you can see it's influencing it. So when we drag the light on now, let's, um, let's see. Oh, it looks like it's bumpy. It's not great. Um, one thing. You can also go to the materials and change your lighting from Cook Toward or DCO. And like things little that little like glossy look that you find in games awesome. Uh, it's good for more um you know the texture anyway. Um, if another thing in game design is you're gonna want to get as low res a texture as you can possibly get away with without it looking silly and cheap. Uh, one thing that will help with this is 
expanding your UVs like this, it's just going to loop. So this texture isn't seamless, so it doesn't work too well. But like this isn't too bad, and it's much more higher res without taking anything away from it. And it's also going to make our normal map look nicer too. And the last, oh, I'll save that later. And the last kind of map you're gonna, you can use in GIMP, but I use Photoshop for this. And uh, get your original image. Sorry. Drop it in there. And this is gonna detect how um, light will hit it in terms of shininess. So it's gonna be a black and white map. So image adjustments. Black and white. Okay. And then you're going to want to work with the levels. Control L. It's going a little bit slow because of traps. So I want the light to hit this a little bit harder. Uh, be a little bit brighter. So it's going to be pretty bright. Uh, save as. And you don't need a, all these maps on everything. Only um, things that are going to be receiving a lot of attention. Or if you do need to put a map on everything, then at least make them lower resolution, which you can do by scaling down the image. So now we have our final spec map. Go to new texture, and you guessed it, image or movie, open, and spec map. It is not a color map, so we uncheck that, but it is going to be affecting, affecting our lighting, so you can play with that. So now it's a bit shinier, a bit brighter. So that is all for today. And I will be releasing more information on textures in the next tutorial. And then we'll eventually get to design. That is all. If you guys have any questions, please post the comments. Um, have a good one, guys. Happy blending.